In this problem, we're told a hot air balloon is ascending at a rate of 12 meters per second and is 80 meters above the ground when a package is dropped over the side. A, how long does the package take to reach the ground? And B, with what speed does it hit the ground? So I, draw an, I drew an image of what's going on here. So we've got this hot air balloon. It's ascending, right, going up 12 meters per second. And at this time, when it's 80 meters above the ground a package, right, it's going to fall down and it's going to hit the ground. So this is just an image of what's going on. Let's go ahead and write down our given, and we're going to go ahead and start with A. So uh, let's write down our given. So what do we know? So when you're doing a vertical problem like this, right, like a free fall problem of like a package or something, uh, you know that acceleration is going to be minus 9.8 meters per second squared, right? The gravity on Earth, this is just G, right? So we're just uh, assuming we're on Earth, right? So minus 9.8 meters per second squared. But what else do we know? So we know the initial velocity of the package is going to be 12 meters per second. And generally, when you assume, uh, if you have something falling out of something, you assume its velocity or the initial velocity of the package is the same as the thing it's in, right? So this thing's going up at 12 meters per second. It's going to fall at 12 meters per second. And then what else do we know? We know the change in our y value, right? So delta y is 80 meters, right? Because the package is starting here at 80 meters, and then it's going to fall all the way down to 0 meters, right? And the way we find change in y is by taking your final, which is 0 meters, minus the initial, 80 meters which is just minus 80. So delta y is going to equal to minus 80 meters. And then what we're going to want to do is, uh, well, we're trying to find time, right? Because it says how long. So I'm going to write t equals question mark because that's what we're solving for. And then let's go ahead and solve. So the formula we're going to want to use to solve this is delta y or delta x. Depends on which way you're working. We're using the y, right? So delta y equals v sub 0 y. And I was supposed to label this with y, but you're just assuming, right? Because this is one dimensional. So v sub 0 y times t plus 1 half a t squared. So this is probably the most common kinematic formula you're using. And we're just going to take our values and plug them in, right? Because you can see we have every variable except for time. We can just solve for it. So delta y is minus 80 is equal to the initial velocity in the y direction, 12. Uh, 12 t. And then it's going to be plus 1 half times a minus 9.8. times t squared. So essentially minus 80 equals 12t. And then 1 half times minus 9.8 is minus 4.9. And we're plusing it, right? So minus 4.9t squared. And then uh, what you want to do is notice how this is almost, or this is quadratic form, right? If I add 80 to both sides, uh, it's going to become minus 4.9t squared plus 12t. And then it's going to be plus 80, right? Because it's being added to the other side. So this right here, uh, what you can do is, if you want to find the value of t, right? So you're going to get two different values when you do this. And it, the way I would, uh, you should probably solve this is by plugging into your calculator. And then if you plug this in and graph it, the point it crosses zero is going to be your time values. So that's how I would do it. So you should get two different values. But uh, one of them is going to be negative, and one of them will be positive. So the one that's negative is just doesn't make sense, right? So time can't be negative, so we know it's only going to be the positive solution. And if you do it and you uh, graph this in your calculator, right, you're going to get 5.446. That's going to be your positive time value. So we know this is what time is going to be. So the time it takes, it's going to be 5.4. And then I'm going to round this up. So 5.45, and then keep in mind what unit. So we're using seconds, right, so as our time. So 5.45 seconds, so that right here answer to a so this is a let's move on to b though so b is going to be with what speed does it hit the ground so generally when you say with what speed does it hit the ground you're talking about your final velocity so that's what we're going to be solving for in this one so we're going to be using the same variables essentially except for now we're trying to solve for v and so you could probably use different equations uh, what i'm going to use is this one right here v squared equals v sub zero squared plus 2a times delta y or x, depends on what you're using. So this is probably the other most common one. And so you're going to use this to solve because we have every variable, right? We have the initial velocity. It's going to be the same. We have a minus 9.8. And we have the change in y. It's going to be the same. And we're solving for v, right? The final velocity, what speed hits the ground. So essentially, if we want to just get v, it's going to be the square root of all this, right? Because this is squared. We're just get rid of, getting rid of this squared. So v sub 0 squared plus 2a times delta y, 
And so all you have to do is just plug in all your variables. So v sub zero is just 12. So 12 squared plus two times a, which is minus 9.8 times delta y, which is minus 80. So essentially it's just gonna be the square root of this. Go ahead and plug it in your calculator. And when you do this, you should get 41.376 and so on. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and round to the tenths place right here. So 41.4. And so keep in mind the units we're using, this is velocity, correct? And our initial velocity is in meter per second. Everything else is in meters and seconds, right? So it's going to be in meters per second. So the answer to B right here is going to be 41.4 meters per second. Uh, your answer to A is 5.45 seconds. And yeah, hopefully you found this video useful.